it merely points out that there's an illusory experience that says there's separation, which then seeks wholeness, which is where wholeness hides. And that just, it just clarifies that that's what's going on. Wholeness hides in the illusory separation. Yeah. Wholeness is separation, the appearance of separation. There isn't anything else. That's why seeking it is hopeless. Wholeness is the appearance of separation. There is only wholeness. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. Hmm. It's mind blowing. <laughs> 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 there's nothing to do with it yeah maybe that's where the misunderstanding that there's no that one shouldn't do anything comes from because yes. the message itself has no qual no no usable quality to it it's, it has no intention in it but it's ineffable there's no way to point to the unconditional celebration because there is only that because there is only that because everywhere you point is the unconditional celebration. The pointing as well. The pointing is as well. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So yeah. So the, the unconditional celebration is both synonymous with the 100 million people that died in the 20th century. And it's also synonymous with pizza. Yeah. <laughs> what this is crazy yeah oh my gosh you got it this is so crazy cool there is only the infinite and yet there is a zygote that apparently becomes an adult yeah which is this the infinite appearing as the story of a zygote becoming an adult which is cool. this okay okay cool cool <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Atlas. Very excited, so pumped to be featuring Jim Newman on the show. Hi, Jim. Hey, Atlas. Thanks so much for coming on the program. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. I'm really excited to talk about all things non-duality. And Jim has been really influential on me and many others. And he's just got this style of sharing the paradoxical message of non-duality with these very direct aphorisms, like there is no path, this is home for no one. And he's hosting meetings worldwide and monthly Zoom meetings. And you can find all the content on his YouTube channel. The links are in the bio below to both his website, simply-this.com and his great channel. We are going to be exploring the ineffable, basically. <laughs> so how do we even do this, Jim? So is it, is it then fair to say that these meetings, these conversations are pointing to what can't be pointed to? Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> but we do it because people come to attend yeah, the meeting and to hear the paradoxical message. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's an unusual, it's, it's unexpected in a way because it's not really presenting anything. It's responding to something that's looking for something. And the response is, there's nothing really lost. So there's nothing, there's nothing to give. There's nothing on offer. The message is really empty. It's, it's no thing responding 
to something saying, I need something more. <laughs> and the response is that that experience is illusory. As I've been watching your content, you've said things like, you seek the end of the need to become. Hmm. And so then that is what comes to the meetings. Well, not really. Okay. Um, what's, what's truly, I mean, in the end, there's, you have to differentiate a little bit and it can okay. be a little pedantic, but the individual, that experience really just seeks more. It's an experience of knowing. And what it does is it seeks more knowing in the hope that when it knows enough, it will find what it feels is lost. What, what's not obvious to it is that seeking or knowing, knowing is the need to know. It's not the end of knowing. Knowing engenders the need to know. But what's longed for beyond that contracted, limited experience of being an individual is the end of seeking, the end of the need to become. Yeah. Yeah. And another way you've mentioned this is that there's this apparent center that wants meaning, it wants purpose more, and it's seeking to bridge the gap of separation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so just to be very clear, because it's so often misunderstood, there's a contracted energy in the body, which is an appearance. And out of that arises the personal experience of I am, which is completely illusory. It's not happening. Like it's not happening now. It never happens. But out of that contracted energy, for that, for that body, it might be the experience that it is happening. And the response is, and there can be nothing done about that, the response is it's not real, it's illusory. Everything else, the apparent world, the apparent contraction, the apparent movement is just seemingly so. It's neither real nor unreal. It, the only thing that's completely illusory or a dream is the experience of being an individual, that everything is about me. So then it's a, it's in a contracted, apparent center that I am an individual comes to the meeting. And then there is a process of the pointing to the paradoxical <laughs> message of non duality of there is no path. This is home for no one. And at that point, then, as is sort of said in the neo Advaita tradition that there's a immediatism of a sense of the recognition of the illusion of the I or ego. Hmm. Well, nobody, nobody realizes the illusion of the I or the ego. It's it. The, one of the issues for the individual is when it, it when it's seeking, it's expecting or the need says that what has to happen is there has to be an answer to my experience. And that answer has to be an addition to me because I feel there's some sort of miss something missing or something lacking. And so I, I then look for a realization. I then look for something more because I experience something missing. That never, that, that never has an end, that's an eternal experience of seeking, 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 seeking is never satisfied. But what the, the meeting isn't about hearing something and something happening. It merely reflects back to the experience that something needs to happen that nothing does. Mm -hmm. And that, that experience that something needs to happen actually hides the reality that what is, is already completely free. And that includes the need experiential need for something to happen. And that's the dilemma for the experience of the individual. It is already what it's longing for. Well, what's longed for, it doesn't long for that. It doesn't long for its end. It's terrified at the end of itself. Would it be fair to say that 
some of the ways of adding attributes because ultimately, as I said, the Nirguna Brahman is that without attributes, the absolute without attributes. And then the Saguna Brahman is when you add attributes to the ultimate, to the absolute, to the ineffable. Yeah. And then that's sort of where you've said things like that this is already whole, that there's yeah. no that there's no lack. It's unconditionally yeah. free. Yeah. Yeah. So the in I don't know those two terms that you talked about, but what's what's obvious is they aren't actually two things. Yep. So the one doesn't become the other. The the appearance of of um, a limitedness is the absolute appearing limited. The experience of separation is the absolute appearing as the experience of separation. There never is separation. That's the dilemma for the individual. It's trying to overcome something that isn't already happening. So the absolute appears as separation. No, and it, well, yes, it is separation. It appears as that. It's not separate from that. It doesn't become separation. So what, what is, is already absolute. Yep, correct, yeah. And there's nothing else. Yes. Yeah. All that is appearing is absolute and that the, the appearance of separation is then why there's the attendance of the non-dual meetings. Yeah, the experience of separation, yeah. The experience of being an individual, a person with a life, free will and choice, meaning and purpose. Yeah. I mean, it can be, there are times, there are people that come to the meetings just because it's, it's just a wonderful thing to hear. Yep. It's just a beautiful thing. It's just amazing, really. It's, it, it always remains fresh and new. It never becomes something old um, and known. So that, and that fresh newness is, is, is awesome. It's just aliveness. So that can yep. be, you know. Yep. Isn't there something that's so beautiful about the will of this appearance that feels like the the appearance of the separate individual that is in a sense kind of like a gps callback mechanism i wouldn't say that i wouldn't say that's beautiful at all okay and there's nothing that that there's nothing that has lost wholeness and there's nothing that finds wholeness so there's no journey that that ex separate individual or experience is truly on that journey is an illusion that journey is the experience that this appearance has a real past and a real future that happens as a cause and effect continuum that's an illusion that's actually death. Real time is the fear of death, which is a big problem for me, that experience of separation. So no, in that sense, I don't see anything amazing about it at all. It's actually, it's actually you know, just quietly suffering, always looking for something, always trying to add something more to itself, mm -hmm. coming from the appearance, coming to the appearance with the experience that something is wrong and needs to be set right. One of the basic energies of that experience is something needs to happen, which is a discontent. It even, it, and what it does is it will hear what we're sharing here and say something needs to happen for this to understand or find what Jim's talking about. And that is the illusion. Jim isn't coming from something that's known. It might be that the ones listening is coming from something what's known and thinks that Jim has something they don't. And it's just the opposite. There isn't anything here. There might be the illusion of something there. 
That's fascinating that there's a, rather than viewing it as beautiful, that there's also this view of it being a quiet suffering. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how fascinating it is, but it, it seems to happen. I mean, that's, that's the experience of being an individual. Something's missing, something's wrong. Something needs to happen. I mean, intrinsically, the entire appearance of which that is in a part is awesome, is beautiful. Yeah. But when you say, is there something beautiful in it? That seems to me as if it has some sort of intention or some sort of function. Sure, sure. And it, and it doesn't. This doesn't have any intention. That's the unconditional, unrecognizable freedom that it is. That it, there's no intention. There isn't any need for this to become. And it doesn't. This doesn't become. Do you also explore the infinitude that this is? Well, you can't explore the infinitude that this is because there is only the infinitude that this is. Okay. So then, yeah. so then would it also be fair to say that this is one appearance of the infinitude? No, because that suggests that there's potential that's unrealized. <clears throat> mm. and, and that's not the case. There isn't potential unrealized because there isn't anywhere or anything else. Potential unrealized comes from an experience that this is really happening and it could be something else. That's not really the way it is. This isn't really happening, but it could be anything. And in that, the revelation is it is anything. It is already anarchy or chaos. Yep. It just appears as this. Uh -huh. Yes, that's been a fun attribute is metaphysical anarchy. That's yeah. been an interesting way to express the ineffable. Now, when we do play with infinity or eternity, that this is the appearance of metaphysical anarchy, and that is eternal or infinite. So eternal wouldn't be a word I would use. So why do you not use eternal? Well, a friend of mine just, just informed me that internal means an age. If you look at it in the, in the dictionary, as a literary term, it's defined as an age. For me, a little, a little, a little cheeky, I say it's just a very long time, eternal. And infinity, so eternal is like a, a very long time, whereas for me, infinite points to that this. I thought eternal is. means without time. Okay. Yeah. Well, if it does, then that's, that's then the, yeah, that's this. Okay. Okay. And infinity for me is what does and doesn't, and there's no beginning and no end. Yeah. The alpha and omega. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this. Okay, cool, cool. Okay. So then it does sound like then eternity being no time and infinity being no beginning, no end, this. Yeah, same yeah. thing. Yeah, cool, cool. Okay. But you don't say that this is an expression of that because you don't want there to be the the inference that there is something more for it to achieve. Well, when you say it's the expression of that, it sounds like, and this isn't because this wants it, it's just because it's obvious that there's no separation between the what you're calling the ineffable and the appearance. Yes, yes. It's the same thing. Correct, yes. Which is not, yeah. can't be understood which is why it can't be pointed to, because pointing is also it. Every word is it. It can't be contained because it is everything. One word is everything. The experience that it, that it, that it develops or becomes is the experience that there's intention or something's incomplete. 
And so something could happen, really happen, that would make a difference to that which we're talking about. Nothing does. You've called this empty happening. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. So would it be fair to say that the empty happening is similar to in the revelations in the last hundred or so years of quantum mechanics that there are all of these infinite modulations of the underlying energy and that then this is an appearance as form. Yeah, but that's what happens in... That is what science does. And that's what the individual does is it says there's all this possibility or potential that appears as certain things. And that's just the experience that there's something other than the appearance. There isn't. The absolute is not hidden. The multitude of, as you called it, of possibilities isn't hidden. It's only the experience that what's happening is real makes it seem like there's something else. This is the multitude of possibilities. This is the absolute. It doesn't become because it is. So there isn't any outside like God that's becoming or projecting this. This is all. Yeah. Which is and isn't. So the aphorism from John 10 30, that is I and my father are one or, yeah. or yeah. the, or the Sanskrit tattvam asi, you oh. are that, you are that. Uh, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say you are that. You wouldn't, and, but, and but think, we, are, we do say this is the ineffable, but you wouldn't say that you are that. Well, I, we, I find we the, are it. the word you and the okay. word I can be misleading. Mm. So, but what about we are it or we are that? Well, there, if there's no I, there's no we. But you also said I and my father are one is okay. Yeah, because I understand what you're saying, but then you okay. went and you gave me another one and I was thinking, oh, I better, I better, I better mm. um, okay. get in there and sort of clarify that, yes, there's not two. Yeah. There might be an appearance of two and the appearance of two as a reality comes out of the experience that I am or that you and I am is mm -hmm. simultaneously the experience mm -hmm. that you are. Is it fair to say that in the most ultimate that there is no path and that this is home for no one and that the appearance of the individual is completely illusory and that then simultaneously another layer is that this Jim Newman character is a unique expression. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a character. Yeah. That's unique expression. Yeah. You could say that. Okay. It's not so, another layer though. It's, the it's, absolute it's, all, it's all it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> The reason why I even say it as another layer is just to be able to even slot it into the conversation because sometimes the individual is so completely rejected that it never even gets its ability to get slotted into because the conversation. Yes, but there's an appearance of a Jim Newman unit yeah. character. Yeah. And there's this appearance of this Atlas unit slash character. Yeah. And so I feel as though that is important okay and the reason why is because in the understanding of the ineffable in the attempt to play in this territory that the simultaneity of the individual being a completely illusory appearance while it also being a unique expression. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Okay. Unique expression is 
you know, sort of the character of the body, we're talking about an apparent past the brain conditioning. Genetics, that's, that's the character, the voice, how it happens, this, the, you know, how, how it moves, how it walks, that's the character. The individual never happens. So when, when it's recognized or when the, the character, the individual falls away, that doesn't actually fall away. The revelation is it never happened. So that's one of the misunderstandings that often comes up is that it could happen, that there's something that needs to happen. And so that's why there's such an undermining of the experience of the individual as a reality. And it's pointed out that it's completely illusory because otherwise it's heard as something wrong and something that needs to change for this to be complete and whole. Yeah. And that would be a misunderstanding of what's being said. So the appearance of the Jim Newman character is anarchic. Yeah. Just and like the, all the words that are happening, the yes. movement of the hands, it's all anarchy just appearing. And yet, do you find it beautiful that there is this appearance of the Jim Newman unit slash character? Well, especially the Jim Newman character is beautiful. Yeah, all the other ones are <laughs> <a little> grand. <laughs> especially the <laughs> I mean, you know, the whole the whole appearance is is awesome, is unspeakably, I mean, creative. Yes, the 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 individual in the experience of knowing what's happening loses the revelation of the aliveness because the knowing is the experience that what's happening is real, and that engenders the need for something else, the aliveness that seems to be lost, and that aliveness is beauty, is purity. And it, it, it is never, it can't be lost. The experience of it being lost is an illusion. And I guess one reason why when this comes out, it totally negates the experience of the individual is because it is also that aliveness and that beauty. And the seeking that it seems to do is completely hopeless because it is already what's longed for and the seeking makes it seem like it's lost. So there's nothing to say to the individual. There's just nothing to say to it. It's actually not yeah. happening. Yeah, yeah. So in the ultimate, there is nothing to say to the individual. There's just this appearance happening. It's the immediacy. There's no need for anything to be said, but things are said. And yes, there's only immediacy. Yeah. 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 Which isn't real. It's not a now. It's not a now that you could be and couldn't be. It's not a now that you could approach. It is, it is, it is that there is only immediacy. Even the experience that it's not is immediacy. Is the unspeakable creativity of the quote, 8 billion appearances of units slash characters. Yeah, bodies. Bodies. Yeah. Is that illusory multiplicity? That's not illusory, that's apparent. The, the only illusion the only illusion is the individual it's just completely unreal the bodies the apparent bodies atlas gym camera uh, cameras and computers and all that are apparent and that just merely points pointing to that they're not real they only they only become experientially real when the individual arises mm. Mm. as real to itself mm. i'm real everything else is real 
Okay. So all appearance is unreal. Neither real nor unreal. Yeah, I see. And the appearance being neither real nor unreal, that when the individual thinks of itself as real, that then it says that the appearance is real. It's, it's more profound than that, really. The, when the individual arises, it's not a thought. It's an experience of knowing. And when the individual, uh, that experience of knowing arises, it actually arises in everything. So everything becomes me. So everything is then real. Everything is related to me, and it's all important or um, in, in my life as me. And, that, and what's interesting is that includes what isn't there and what isn't happening. It's all related to me. It's all about me. <laughs> and that's not a thought. The I doesn't have thoughts. What happens is it, it takes, in, in, that, in that it takes ownership of everything. It can't differentiate. It picks up everything because it's seeking. It picks up everything. It picks up thoughts and feelings as well. And they feel closer to it. And so it feels more important to it. And it tries to do things with it as far as sift through them to find the good ones and the bad ones. And it has this big, huge file cabinet where it's making sense of everything all the time. So it comes up a thought which doesn't, doesn't fit to its story of itself. It has a toolkit where it drills a hole in it, it cuts off a corner because it's an unacceptable thought, doesn't fit to it. It's, it's, very, it's very exhausting being an individual. It's a lot of effort. And yet it is the way that this is apparently expressed. What? That the, it is exhausting. I, I'm 100% alignment on how exhausting it is in the sense of constantly seeking yeah. to in the in the and having this in a sense this massive sorting of of information and yeah. and that type of process and then there's sort of the this piercing of this veilless veil or whatnot, the gateless gate, that when that sort of happens, all of the seeking and the filing cabinet stuff falls away. Yes. And that yet it is the way that the appearance happens is, is that this neither real nor unreal appearance is a apparent Jim Newman character and an Atlas character that are and eight billion bodies that have this experience of that uh, that apparently have this experience of just of this happening yeah well I mean I don't not to be too pedantic but this isn't actually an experience there isn't actually a consciousness in the body being aware of yeah. something else. That's just part of the experience of being an individual. And then when, when we go up and sleep for a third of our lives and we, mm -hmm. and we dream out the environment and the observer in the environment, and then we, that dream ends where you know, Jim simulated out a uh, himself being Paul by the Eiffel Tower. And then he goes and he simulates himself out in a relationship with Karen in New York. And so that is analogous to this. Is that how you view it? 
Um, well, as the illusion of the individual that something is really happening, but dreams happen. I dream. This isn't about changing the appearance. It's about the revelation that it's only apparent. It's not real or unreal. And then is that similar to when you become Paul in your, in your dreamed reality and you're hanging no, out? No, it's by the, the collapsing Tower? of becoming anything. So when that dreamed simulation happens. Mm, that's just what's happening. That's just what's happening. It's very and, simple. And is There's this also that? What, yeah, absolutely. Okay. You so can't, the, okay. you can't tell the difference. Okay. You in a dream when you when you're dreaming at night you have the experience it's, it's haphazardly begins somewhere, but it seems congruent. That's the experience, and it then goes on in some sort of it's whatever it does. You don't know that this isn't that. You don't know that this hasn't just now started as some dream haphazardly, and the brain or the 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 atlas experience is making sense out of it. You don't know. And that's when we can potentially leverage analogies like the dream that help with a, as you pointed earlier, there's this apparent suffering of the seeking individual and yeah. that the dream analogy can sort of help that cessation of the suffering i don't i don't think anything helps the cessation of suffering you, will you this message that doesn't more? help anyone it can it can if it's understood there can be some relaxation in the body around it totally. there can be some some loss of beliefs about what this appearance was about but there is no intention because, and you rightly pointed out, it negates the individual completely. And in as much, it has no message to the individual. It is not trying to help anyone because it doesn't recognize anyone. Mm. Because quite simply, there isn't anyone. So in the dream, you're Paul by the Eiffel Tower and that there's Sally that comes up to you and yeah. that and that Sally begins saying that that she encountered some sort of an a accident of some sort and that she feels really bad that she spilled really hot coffee on somebody that she was dining with a moment ago and she's telling you as Paul about it and that you you in that under in this understanding that we're talking about right now you as paul would in the appearance of paul would recognize that both sally her suffering about spilling the coffee and then you listening to her help helping her not suffer that all of that in the grand scale is a complete a, apparent neither real nor unreal dreamed it's just what's happening it's just what's happening yeah apparently yeah that's all there is is what seems to arise and it is already whole and complete so there isn't it doesn't have it's it doesn't extend beyond it doesn't have any, any limit to it. There isn't a beginning and an end to that which can't be said. Yes. And that's why the words infinite or eternal, in a sense, they assist a lot with the disintegration or the dissolution of the illusory I am thought. It, I am isn't a thought experience it's an experience yeah oh, okay. if it were a thought it'd be easy to deal with and the reason this message is so often rejected is because there's an experience of i am there's an experience of 
of awareness. There's an experience of, a, of consciousness. And so it rightly, I mean, quite understandably, this message is rejected because it goes against an actual experience. And for the individual, all it has, all it knows is experience. And then and the individual never hears what's being suggested. So this message is never heard by the individual. But something else can, let's say, um, sense it. And, and that can then relax some of the, of the contracted, contracted energy. But yeah. that without intention, nobody could do it. Just like this takes absolutely no responsibility for the message or anything that seems to happen out of it because it doesn't yep. come from anyone or anywhere. Yep. Exactly like this, yes. the appearance. It's already unconditionally free. It never becomes unconditionally free. Yeah. Is it fair to say that the unconditionally free wholeness that is apparently happening also has a in a sense, a dualistic concession where there's a suffering and a well-being, where there's people that don't have their basic needs being met, where they don't have access to clean water. Yeah, that or, seems to happen. And that it's exciting to talk about the architectures and to execute those protocols yeah. that that enable more people to have their basic needs met yeah well i mean i'm sure there's characters out there that would enjoy doing that and some that wouldn't why not sure building spaceships and iphones and yeah i think i think i think what you're pointing to and i agree that often this this sharing is misunderstood as sort of the negation of activity or the negation of a world where things can be done and happen. And really it's just negating a personal volition that makes it happen. But of course, all that stuff still apparently happens. There's nothing right or wrong about any of it. There's no judgment in, the, in, the, in what's being shared here at all. It merely points out that there's an illusory experience that says there's separation, which then seeks wholeness, which is where wholeness hides. And that just, it just clarifies that that's what's going on. Wholeness hides in the illusory separation. Yeah. Wholeness is separation, the appearance of separation. There isn't anything else. That's why seeking it is hopeless. Wholeness is the appearance of separation. There is only wholeness. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. Hmm. It's mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to do with it. Yeah. Maybe that's where the misunderstanding that there's no, that one shouldn't do anything comes from because yes. the message itself has no qual no, no usable quality to it. It's, it has no intention in it. I'm happy that you mentioned that there's the occasional interpretation of non-duality, which will make it feel like the creativity of the expressions is not beautiful yeah but it absolutely is beautiful it's neither real nor unreal but it's absolutely beautiful the yeah. as we were listing meeting the basic needs of people worldwide and creating these incredible devices of technology that enable us to communicate and all yeah. this type of stuff <clears throat> yeah but the core what you're doing part. now is you're putting you're putting a value on 
what would generally be called helpful things, mm. which negates other. And what the suggestion is, no matter what arises, what you dislike most, the worst thing you could think of, and the best thing you could think of are all wholeness. There is no, there is no difference in that sense. And let's make the dualistic concession and say that the, the person that makes a loaf of bread for their family is feeding three or four people and that the person that teaches a million people how to make loaves of bread is feeding millions of people. And so right now I'm creating this, this Atlas unit has the appearance of making this value distinction as yeah. you, as you, which is a out. dream, which is yeah. part of the dream of hope of the individual, the, the individual having is having that sense of lack or something needing to happen creates an entire system, not as a choice, but as a reaction. And, <clears throat> and it creates a belief system uh, and the belief system is its story about itself, about how it's going to find wholeness. And that belief system is in genders or has within it the, the um, values of good and bad and right and wrong. And it will come up with all sorts of different things that it says are good, but that only relates to its expectation that if it is good, it will find what it feels is missing. Now, this value system where there's- It's an illusion. It's just an illusion. Yes, yes. It has no value. Yes. And then there's also the value system where there's a suffering, there's malevolence or violence or murder, rape. And then there's the well-being and prosperity and abundance. And there's sort of this- dualistic concession in the value system where- But it's all still what is, which is neither real nor unreal. Yes, and the 8 billion apparent bodies undergoing the civilizational mm -hmm. dialectical process towards abundance and prosperity and well-being and away from violence and suffering is great. In, in a dualistic reality, yeah. Yeah, in the dualistic concession. This yeah, has been- I, I, There's no concession here of dualistic, of a dualistic reality that has any value. From, from the, what we're talking about, actually, it's obvious that the entire appearance is already completely at balance. Yeah. That it has no charge at all. That it actually mm. has no need to become. I mean, really, there isn't another 8 billion people. There isn't a world out there of suffering and hunger and all the things we're talking about. Just there, like is simply, there is simply what's happening. And what you're bringing into the conversation yep. are these thoughts about all of that. Just like Paul is in your dream as well, Paul. It's your, it's your thought of Paul. In the example to try to illuminate this this conversation in a sense it's almost as though the infinite or the eternal is a really great attribute along with anarchy for the non-dual and then there's the attribute of something like evolution that's in a sense a good attribute for the dualistic concession. There's the apparent evolutionary process where you went from being a zygote to being a 30 trillion celled unit mm -hmm. character. Yeah. And that appearance is useful to know in its appearance because it gives insight into the nature of the dream. Yes, As, no, I see, I don't agree with that. Okay. 
So, so for example, when a child recognizes the infant recognizes that there is no separation and that there is simply this appearance happening. And yet also they recognize that they went from being a zygote to being a 30 trillion celled adult. There's no value in the appearance. There's just simply no value in it because it has no intention. Value would send, give the sense that something was more valuable than something else. That only arises when there's a sense of need there isn't any, there isn't any need, there isn't any value. There's nothing wrong with the recognition or the realization or the knowing that this body is the result of an apparent um, evolution that became something. But at the same time, this is the Big Bang. So there isn't any value in that process because there isn't any real process. It's this appearing as that process of a single cell becoming. But this is all of that. It seems as though with the infinite or eternal non-dual that the ineffability of that neither real nor unreal appearance happening this simply this that 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 in a sense simultaneously also recognizing the dualistic dichotomous concession between the suffering and the well-being and the and the multiplicity the concession of the eight billion apparent bodies that are all uniquely expressions of that infinite eternal non-dual it's the description of in a sense the most outwardness of the inwardness the inwardness is the non-dual, infinite, ineffable, eternal. And the outwardness is this apparent multiplicity of unique units slash characters that are dreamed. That are neither real nor unreal, but it's still cool that Jim has this unique iris he has unique coloration around his pupil and that all 8 billion of us have unique coloration in our iris around our pupil. And that that is in a sense, an artistic expression of that infinite of that eternal of that non-dual. Do you also kind of see it like a big, like artistic anarchic creative expression? Well, no, I mean, not, not as an experience. Not as an experience, but as a creative anarchic expression. But that's, this is a, a creative anarchic, but it, it's not, it, just to be clear, it is the ineffable. Yes. Yeah, it is no thing appearing as everything you just said. I can't help but get the feeling you're looking for some value in it, that somehow because it's artistic, it has more value than something else. And that, that, if that, that may not be true, but let's just assume it, it is. And, and the response to that would be that that comes out the need of something because there, there is equal value or equally emptiness of value in everything we've talked about today because there isn't any real separation for anything to become a need. It is already complete, perfect, in that it couldn't be any other way. There is no comparison. 
because everything that you mention is everything. So there's no way to compare. And in that sense, it's, com it's perfect. Where we're playing right now is interesting because the equal emptiness of value is the infinite, eternal, and non-dual. And even the illusory multiplicity is ineffable. It's all ineffable. Yet the most outward in the this dualistic concessional juxtaposition in that in that outwardness of the of the value system that there's a there's a nesting of sorts it's like the nesting is a it's like the nesting's concentric circles with the non-dual eternal infinite with another nested circle inside of that, which is the dualistic concession of very similar to the Taijitu, which has the monism, and then it has the yin yang dualism on the inside. And then there's also another concentric circle, which is the multiplicity, the 8 billion apparent bodies that are the creative expression of the non-dual infinite and it just it appears as though there is a synthesis of the east in its non-dual infinite eternal along with what is in the west this gratitude that we were expressing a moment ago which is the infinite creative expression through the apparent individual where you get the technology of these devices and of these electric vehicles and of these eradications of people not having food and water and that is something to be celebrate celebrated and that's where it is <clears throat> what appears as a synthesis between the that non-dual infinite eternal eastern with the sort of western creative expression of the infinite through these individuals how does that resonate not it, it there isn't there is no duality duality is exactly like you described these two things and this and that and what what might not be what 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 we're talking about here is that this or this or that is everything there is only everything and it never separates. And yet it you, is only the, everything. And yet you're the gym unit character and I'm the Atlas unit character, but it's in the dream and it's an no, appearance. No. The character is an appearance and whatever appears is everything. So there's no real movement. There's no real separation. There aren't really two things happening. There's only everything, whatever that is, whatever this is, it's all there is. It is the dream of the individual that this is really happening, which then projects out that there's something else really happening. So you don't play with the value system. There isn't any value. There's just simply no value. Value is the need of the individual. It's the story it tells itself that the appearance has some lacking in some way. Value is the story I tell myself of becoming and my value, but what you, I find valuable. You're not going to go and eat a piece of garbage. Yeah. 
but well, you... it depends on it depends on what we what you call garbage. Do you know what you know what they call sushi in Texas? No. What do they Bait. call it? Bait? Yeah. You know, like if you go fishing, you have bait. Oh, on your I get it. I get it. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. But there doesn't need to have a value system for there to be an appreciation of food of one side or the other. I may, I'm, I see this whole thing with when there's a billion people around the planet that are still figuring out access to clean water and mm -hmm. abundant sources of food. I and the West in many ways get really excited about this apparent individual, which is really just the creative expression of the infinite of the non-dual that is a motivating force saying, ah, we are executing these next generation architectures that eradicate the 100 million people in this part of the world that don't have access to that clean water and food. And then there's this applause for the company and for the employees and the excitement yes. there. And mm -hmm. see, and that is in a sense, that's in a value system, that's more beautiful than the lethargic, apathetic expression of the infinite, which is sitting and eating fast food and just shoving that in its mouth and very gluttonous and lazy. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah, so does, yeah, so, so no, this, that's just the story of the individual trying to find something of value and judging fast food as not good because it has the, the belief that there is something good that will bring about what it's looking for, that will bring about wholeness. And the experiences seafood, um, fast food won't bring about wholeness but eating brown rice or vegetables or whatever will bring about wholeness. But yet just you're simply not what eating. What seems to be happening? What's that? But you're. But yet you're not eating fast food every single day because you know that as a value system that that's going to create a. Don't, but that's just not the way it is. That that heart that's disease. An addition to, I mean, the individual, if there is one, will then add on to its actions value system, but generally the body will eat what feels good what what brings what brings you know what 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 feels good it's as though there's the... no value to it at all in that sense that you're talking about there is no more value in in clean water than unclean water there's nothing wrong really with helping people with helping people so find interesting. clean water well, it's all the, in, what, what's being in, pointed to in is the non-dual. There is only the non-dual. It's it's there, in, it is never duality. <laughs> it's a dream of the individual, and it, it is in that dream. <laughs> but that you prefer clean value. water. But you prefer clean water. You you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And and that sort of makes this conversation beautiful because there is only the non-dual where there's no value between clean water and dirty water. And yet then in the dualistic concession, there is, I definitely prefer clean water. Hmm. But it, the, the preference of clean water is just simply what's happening. There's no value in that. It's simply what's happening. Yeah. Okay. But yet there's a preference for the clean water. There's all sorts of preferences. Yeah, yeah. This is that was that was an interesting exploration right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so there's all sorts of preferences. So there's the preference for well-being. That's sort of what yeah. you would say. Is there's all sorts of preferences. Well, some people have a preference for too much cheese. And they there's a preference to eat more cheese than is healthy. And so they get gallstones. That's just what's happening. Some people have a preference for smoking. It seems as though the, the celebration of the infinite expressing itself creatively through the illusory individuals is what has enabled- but This is also creativity. 
That's what I'm saying. And that's great. There's nothing else. Yeah. It's also the yeah. absolute. It doesn't come through and become something else. It is that. It's so, it's so, it, it just rolls off. Yeah. It's like water on a duck's back. There isn't two things going on. There is only the infinite. There isn't the infinite becoming. It is when the, when the experience of the infinite becoming and there's something else going on that then value comes into it. Because the experience of the individual in that experience of separation is that something's missing. So in the Taijitu, which I feel is probably one of the greatest symbols that's, that's ever been made, there's this monist non-dual infinite eternal and then there's the dualistic yin yang within it and that the there is no becoming like you've been saying there's only the being or the apparent being and that is the monist and then the dualistic becoming is something along the lines of that you did go from a zygote to 30 trillion cells and you which do is have this. and you, which is this and you do have the preference of clean water instead of dirty water yeah yeah that's fascinating uh -huh. uh, and this is what i was talking to you about and actually Rita as well, your wife, who does so much epic behind the scenes stuff to actually make, help this, make this happen, that these are the styles of dialectic that a lot of the non-dual community is interested in hearing because mm -hmm. there's a lot of, there's a lot of, people that are trying to figure out what we just talked about a moment ago mm -hmm. because in a sense the the description this dualistic description that we did a moment ago of there being the preference for clean water is something that people feel all the time that they have this preference towards clean water rather than dirty water but that when if if the if the non-dual paradoxical message that's <clears throat> being expressed in the appearance through the Jim Newman unit is coming out, there is no value system. That yes. yes, that then people say that yes. But what about the preference for me choosing or for it coming through to choose? But now you're back to, to free will and choice of which there isn't any. Yes, correct. No free will, no choice. And yet this unit, this character is... Has a preference. Ha, has a preference. Which is not dualistic. Preferences aren't dualistic. Okay, well, they can be described with two poles in a spectrum. Okay. But that's not dualistic either. There is, there is only what seems to be happening. There's never two things. And so this is sort of what I, what I was just mentioning is that it's like the simultaneity of the non-dual infinite eternal wholeness perfection appear apparent happening with the simultaneous i'm there it's coming through to have a preference towards clean water rather than dirty water so it doesn't come through it is there's not yeah it is the preference it appears as a preference i say come through because then that makes it so that there's not an attachment to choice and free will that's the yeah, but only there isn't reason. but there as long as there's an individual there's not if there's, this isn't about detachment as long as there's an individual there's an experience of choice and free will just like there's an experience of value, an experience of meaning and purpose. That's just part and parcel of the experience of separation. And yet you, would it be fair to say that you enjoy a nice night out with Rita in Austria and versus, you know, if you're having to lay 
on the couch behind you because you have very severe knee pain and you and you and you you, you have a pref clear preference. There's a clear preference. Between. There are preferences, but preferences are what seems to be. I feel as though the Taijitsu plays a massive role in what we're playing with right now and why it was formulated over a thousand years ago. And there is no thousand yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm aware. I love it. I love it. See, that's the thing. In the in the Taijitsu, it would be like there is no thousand years ago in the most non-dual monist sense and then in the dualistic concession sense it would be like well yeah i guess technically 30 years ago there were no laptops and now we're using these laptops to talk yeah but but that thought is this appearing as that thought there is no real 30 years ago the non-dual appearing as the thought of talking about 30 years ago. It's really not that complicated. There's just what appears and it can appear as anything. It's limitless without limit. And it can appear as a thought of 8 billion people having more water or, or not, or a computer or a zygote or that symbol that you mentioned. I can't remember what it is. The Taijitsu. Taijitsu. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it can appear as anything. There is nothing that's dual. There is no thing. All of this is no thing being this. Sometimes it there's the interpretation of the non-dual, which is that the individual, which is an apparent individual. The individual is illusory, and there's no such thing as non-duality. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yep, yeah. cool, cool. It's just the, the thing that it, it is very much <clears throat> something that the non-dual community, which doesn't exist, is... <laughs> it exists as that thought. Is as the thought um, that is playing with is that when the individual is so negated as an illusion that then there's no celebration like a big confetti about the beauty of the expression of and because it, needs, it lives in a world of need and so it looks for celebration well, it is just an eternal celebration. This is just eternal fireworks. No, no, but that's not what you were describing a second ago. <clears throat> you were describing the, the non-dual community that has the sense of the individual <clears throat> being negated, negates the celebration of this. And I, my, the response was, the individual is just needing. It never gets enough. They will never have enough. Even if, even if we were to agree or somehow come to the conclusion that everything is celebration, for the individual, it wouldn't be enough. There's just not enough for the individual, for that experience of separation. It's always experiencing the loss of the aliveness that this is already. So if everything is the celebration, then even dirty water is as celebrated as clean water. Absolutely. Yeah. See that and this is this is the But I would have to uh, say unconditional celebration. Because it there's no way to point to what this is. Okay. I'm following now. Okay. Cool. And when you say unconditional, it is no longer relatable. It's no longer relevant. That points to the limitlessness of the appearance, the beginning and endlessness of the appearance. And then would it be, do you, do you resonate with the word surrender? That's just something that the individual is looking for. The individual, one of the basic experiences is that something needs to happen for this to be what's looked for or, and, or more that uh, what's longed for. And it never happens. And that experience is not this, the next something else, something else, 
That's just the experience. Nobody could, and surrender is the idea that there's someone with free will and choice that could give that up. And that, that hides the reality yeah. that giving that up is also what's next, is mm -hmm. also the yeah. need for something to happen. Okay. Yeah, unconditional celebration. That's all there is. Beautiful. And that's why Francis Lucille talked about it as an eternal fireworks. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And yet this apparent unit or vehicle is, has the preference of clean water, of fireworks that are not food that is going to give me heart disease, mm. you know? So, but it's ineffable. There's no way to point to the unconditional celebration. Because there is only that. Because there is only that. Because everywhere you point is the unconditional celebration. The pointing as well. The pointing is as well. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that's, that's a great place to, to wrap. Freedom appearing is another way to potentially talk about that. The unconditional celebration is freedom appearing. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I like that as well. And then, oh, this would be interesting. What about, what about this apparent expression that this has or that this is the trying to trying to take the unconditional freedom and unconditional celebration that we're talking about and trying to package that up into videos and and animated series and art and books it's just what happens it's just what happens yeah and the person that picks up a gun and murders somebody else is just what happens yeah and so is the one that stops him and so is the one that stops him. Or doesn't. Or doesn't. See, what we're getting into is the experience that the individual has free will and choice and could choose to do something or, some, or not do something. That's just part of the illusory control that the individual feels it has over the appearance. So when we say all is unconditional freedom slash celebration, that can also be synonymous with the Worst thing you can think of. With the, with the non, yeah, it can be synonymous with the worst thing you can think of, and it can be synonymous with, with God. Well, I mean, or, or, or pizza. Or pizza. Okay, fair, fair. Wow. So, yeah, so the, the unconditional celebration is both synonymous with the 100 million people that died in the 20th century and it's also synonymous with pizza yeah <laughs> what this is crazy yeah oh my gosh you got it this is so crazy jeez it's like yeah, a billion people that get access to clean water is a pizza. But there aren't a billion people, are there? Is a, is a pizza, which is a murder that's happening, which is the invention of the printing press, which is, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, this... <clears throat> Actually, it's the telegraph was the most profound change in society of all time. The telegraph because it was the first time we could send information that made a biggest, that was the, they say, you know, who were they? I don't know, but they say that was one of the biggest evolutionary steps, the telegraph. But evolution is a illusion. No, it's really simple, man. The only illusion is the individual, everything else. But ev evolution is not an, is not an illusion. It's an appearance. It's an appearance. Yeah. So evolution is an appearance, just like this becoming is an appearance. Becoming is a dream. If we're talking about personal becoming, 
It's a dream of the individual. It never happens. Is evolution a dream? No, it's an appearance. It's an appearance, but the There's becoming different words. is an... If we're talking about the individual becoming, that's a dream. There is no individual to become. If we're talking about the wheel becoming a Lamborghini, that's an appearance. What's not, what's completely unreal is that there's a person that has free will and choice, that has a real experience of separation. That's just completely illusory. When with it comes the sense that th things have value, that the appearance has meaning and purpose, that is completely illusory, that never happens. Everything else is simply what's appearing. And it's neither real nor unreal. So the zygote is an appearance, is the past is an appearance. The thought of 8 just, billion people. Just like evolution is an appearance. Yeah. So evolution is an appearance, the zygote is an appearance, the wheel evolving into the Lamborghini is an appearance. Yep, seemed to but, happen. But becoming is an illusion. The becoming of the individual, that there is a process okay. of wholeness that will become at some point through my personal development, that Got the it. appearance is related to me, that is completely illusory. Got it. The becoming, of, the becoming of the individual yeah. going through this gateless gate is, is a dream. Is a dream, is an illusion. Happen. Yeah. Is it never illusion, happens. Is an illusion slash dream. But evolution from a zygote to a human adult or the wheel to the Lamborghini, that is an appearance. Yeah. Okay. But then that is not becoming. Well, I mean, we can say we can talk about a, 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 a tire becoming a Lamborghini. Okay, uh, we can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But it's not personal. Yeah, it's not personal. I see now. Now I'm following. So that's why you specifically added individual when you said yes. becoming of individual is yes. evolution slash dream. That's but the becoming slash evolution from a zygote to an Just adult is what an seemed to have happened. Yeah. <clears throat> but at the same time, it's still just this. Yeah. Evolution is this, appearing as evolution. The wheel becoming a Lamborghini is this, appearing as the wheel becoming a Lamborghini. All right. And just to clarify this point is that, and we can wrap with this, that the infinite modulations or the infinite combinations are appearing and that this is that appearance and it's neither this, real nor unreal this is the infinite yeah Appear the infinite doesn't become there is only the infinite cool there is only the infinite and yet there is a zygote that apparently becomes an adult yeah which is this the infinite appearing as the story of a zygote becoming an adult, which is cool. this. Okay. Okay. Cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, Jim, this is, this is awesome. I'm ridiculously grateful that you talk to us and well, thanks. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Jim's got, an awesome amount of content on his website with essays and videos you can check out again it's simply dash this.com and then also his youtube channels just got all of his meetings that he's held across the world in the last several years he has those filmed and they're on his youtube channel go and watch those there's a lot of great content there and also the Zooms that Jim holds happen monthly and you can join those by simply going to the website and there's a button for the Zoom and meetings and then you can sign up for that. Hopefully what we can do is also get Jim in conversation with other communicators of the, of the non-dual paradoxical message 
on the channel, which is part of our plan is to get maybe with this Atlas unit to get the Jim Newman unit with maybe other um, units on the subject, which will be exciting. That is all. We're really grateful and appreciative for you guys for tuning in. Thank you so much. And we would love to hear from you in the comments below. Let us know what you're thinking, what you're feeling in the comments below. And like the video if it brought you value. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Also, share the video with other people that you feel like would bring value to. And again, go and check out all of Jim's awesome links below. We love you very much. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you so much again, Jim. We're ridiculously grateful. This was fantastic. This is fantastic. Thanks, man. All right. Thank you, everybody. We will talk to you soon. Peace.